All right, let us turn our attentions back to where we started. Mm. Dwayne Poli returns to the San Diego State basketball team. What a story. Oh, and by the way, ironically, San Diego State returns to the top 25 this week Mm -hmm. after Poli returns to the lineup. They're number 24 in the AP poll. They're number 22 in the coaches poll. And here is Dwayne Poli returning to the Scott and BR show on the Mighty 1090. DP, good afternoon. How you doing? Mm, Not nearly as good as you. Not as well as you are, my man. (laughs) Congratulations on getting back. Thank you. I appreciate it. Dwayne, did you think you were going to play again in a San Diego State uniform? Um, Yeah, I did, actually. You know, I had a lot of positivity around me and in my inner circle. And, you know, I kept faith throughout this whole whole little situation. And, you know, now I'm right back where I need to be. And who was the most prominent voice in that in that circle that you talk about? Uh, it was a lot of prominent voices. Yeah. You know, my mom, my dad, my girlfriend, my coaches, Tom, uh, about six other doctors. So you know, it was a it was a lot of positivity going on around me. So I felt the love and uh, all the uh, prayers that were sent to me through the fans in San Diego. So that's what really kept me believing that I was going to be able to return this year. All right, Dwayne Police, 61 days. It was at Viejas Arena against UC Riverside when he went down, passed out, and and then this is the first game back against San Jose State this past Saturday night. Let's let's work our way from the beginning to the end of the story. And even though it's not really finished yet, Dwayne, the night of the UC Riverside game, what do you remember? Um, I just remember getting really lightheaded and dizzy. And then the next thing you know, I look up and it's like about 10, 15 people over me. So that's all I really remember. Do you remember like thinking I need to go to the hospital or do you remember maybe thinking I'm fine? Just get me up. I'll, I'll, I'm fine. I'm good. Uh, initially, I felt fine. You know, as soon as I got up, I felt like I was ready to go. I was ready to get back right on the floor. But, you know, taking uh, precautionary uh, steps, you know, coach and uh, Tom decided for me to go to the hospital. Did you worry at all that, oh, this is not the first time this has happened? Because we all found out afterwards that this has happened in practice a year earlier. Were you worried, like, maybe there's something really wrong with me? Um. Well, I always kind of, well, when I was younger, I had asthma, so, you know, I always had a little battle with that, but... Wait, wait, when you, when uh, you were younger, you had a battle with what? Asthma. Asthma, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Okay, go ahead. But um, I never really thought anything was wrong with me. I figured I just, uh, I just didn't hydrate myself well enough that day prior to the game. And that was so, it? You just thought dehydration? Yeah, I just thought it was dehydration. I never knew it was going to be this extensive. Mm. Okay, so so what happens in the days after the collapse? What what was what was going on with you in terms of all the medical testing and and all that kind of stuff? Take us through that. Well, you know, it was so many things being thrown around. You know, it was the lint bias thing, and then there was another guy that played for the Celtics. So it was a lot of things that were just going on and being thrown up in the air. But you know. Um, I just stayed positive throughout the whole thing, and I just tried to block any negative thoughts out. So, you know, I dealt with some very uh, good doctors. They told me that what I, my condition isn't uh, life-threatening. So, you know, as soon as I heard that confirmation, then, you know, I just say, okay, I'm going to just stay positive and uh, do, do whatever I could do to uh, try and return to the court. How, how did you break the news to your family? If you're talking to your mom and your dad or your siblings, whatever. I mean, how did you break that news to the to the family? Um, well, they've been closely involved in throughout the whole situation, so I think they kind of knew. But mm-hmm. they were still really excited for me to know that I was uh, back on the court. Okay, so you you go through all these tests, and and the way it's been reported, you had um, some kind of a procedure called a catheter. Ablation. I, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Does that sound right to you? Yes, it does. And this procedure, the way it's been, like I said, reported by Mark Ziegler in the UT, is um, a procedure using an electrode to destroy abnormal heart cells that cause cardiac arrhythmia. Well, uh, it, it, it burns the uh, circuits. It burns the electrical circuits. Okay, I don't know what that means. Do you? Well, <laughs> from my understanding... My doctor said that I have a more electrical circuits in my heart that's causing it to pump fast mm-hmm. when, I, um, when it's under stress, and that's what happened. Okay. And that slows the, the heart down. 
Well, it doesn't send oxygen to the brain when it's pumping so fast. Uh-huh. Ah, I got gotcha. you. All right, so you have this procedure when, DP? Uh, New Year's. Okay, I'm just trying to do the timeline here. Um, so what was the date of the collapse? Do you remember? I'm sure you do. The 23rd, I believe. Okay, and then just about eight days later, you had the surgery. Yes. How long, Dwayne Poley, after the surgery, were you saying to the coaches, hey, they've already told me it's not life-threatening. Let me get back out on the floor. Uh, about a week later, <laughs> when I was uh, when I was fine to walk again, you know, I felt uh, I felt like I was ready to rock and roll right then and there. But you know, um, taking precautionary uh, measures again, you know, I just seeked out uh, other second opinions, and you know, I couldn't just go off my own. Where they wanted to, uh, I had to go see a numerous amount of doctors, and they did a fabulous job on making sure that you know everything that was going on with me was taken care of. Meanwhile, you were just looking for that doctor would say, okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's you can only, play. <laughs> that's the only thing I was waiting for. I was just, I didn't want to hear about any conditions, any nothing. I just wanted to know when I could uh, get on the court again. Wow. Dwayne Poli comes back this past Saturday night as San Diego State beat San Jose State 61 days away after the collapse and uh, finally back on the floor. So, Dwayne, you, um, you heard this is not a life-threatening condition, but when did you finally get told – it's also not career threatening. In other words, you can and you will be able to play again. Um, right after the uh, New Mexico game was when uh, I was one hundred percent clear to play again. Coach that, told me that I'll be able to play. But that's just like last week. Yeah. Well, I knew it wasn't uh, when he said it was life threatening and uh, that it wouldn't uh, uh, kill me or anything. You know. A, a couple of weeks after I was uh, after the ablation, I was uh, able to start conditioning again. So I'll say about a week or so after then, probably like the first two weeks of January. You were ready to go. Yeah. One of the things I got to give you a ton of credit for is is every time I saw you at a game, even though I thought it has to be killing this kid that he's not on the floor and he can't play, you always had a huge smile on your face. You were always supportive of your teammates. You traveled on the road with these guys. A lot of guys might have said, I'm packing it in. Oh. I'm not going to be able to play again. What well, what kept you believing and wanting to be around the team? Um, just knowing that those are my brothers, you know, and just being there to support the team and knowing that they just had my back throughout this whole situation and, them giving me comforting words throughout the whole thing uh, made me want to be there for them and make sure I, if there was anything I could do to support them, I was willing to do it. So then now you, you find out that you're cleared to play, and this is like last – was it last week or the week before was the New Mexico game? About a week ago? Uh, yeah, it was last Tuesday. Okay, last Tuesday. So you find out last Tuesday you're cleared to play. What kind of legal documentation do you or your parents have to sign – um, that takes away the liability from the school should, God forbid, something happen to you, given that it's already happened twice? Well, um, yeah, I actually did sign a waiver um, that was put together by the school's lawyers. And then uh, my parents, they had a lawyer look it over thoroughly, and they looked it over thoroughly, and they felt that uh, I also had my doctor look it over. And everybody felt that it was the right thing to do to go ahead and sign it and not just go ahead and uh, prolong the whole uh what is the document and listen i'm paraphrasing this is just my guess you ready yeah if he dies on the floor it's our problem not yours exactly yeah that's basically what he would have saying yeah dwayne poli on scott and br on the mighty 1090 and you signed that thing no problem huh yeah no problem you know i'm ready i was too ready to get back on the court for you to just sit and oh should i sign it should i not so it took about a week or so and then it was signed what was was there a time, was there a place that you made, or a shot that you made, a defensive play that you made, where you knew that everything was okay and everything was going to be all right? Uh, the first play of the game, as soon as I got in the game, I caused a turnover, and I was like, all right, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't take you long. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we talk about the game, would you just do one other thing for us? Tell us when Coach Fisher alerts the team that you're going to suit up and play. Mm-hmm. Well, well, because the thing is, is that 
There was no social media. There were no players going, hey, good news. Dwayne's coming back. Um, when did Coach actually tell everybody you were going to play? Um, he told us before uh, before we left for uh, San Jose State that I would be playing. And everybody was really happy for me, you know, uh, just jumping up and down for me, clapping, doing all that type of stuff. So, you know, everybody was really happy and supportive of me. Really? I mean, anybody, including you, I mean, anybody bawling like, oh, my God, this is finally happening. The dude is really coming back. Because I know I, I'm an emotional wreck, man. Plus, I was on my period. You know how it goes. I mean, I, I lose it right there on the spot. Nah, no tears falling. But, uh, you know, I could really tell that everybody was genuinely happy for me. Yeah. And at the point in the first half when Coach looks down the bench and goes, DP, mm-hmm. what was that like for you? Uh, it was exciting. Uh, I was a little nervous, but as soon as I got on the court again, I was like, okay, this is where I need to be and this is where I belong. Did you did you feel like all of your teammates also? I mean, the, just watching you go back out there and, and how happy they were for you? Oh, yeah. You know, I definitely felt, uh, felt the love for my right. teammates. Dude, uh, what was it like to knock down that three? Oh, it was an unexplainable feeling, you know, just to see my first shot that I took going in, you know, it was a great feeling for me. Yeah, and then you almost had that alley-oop dunk. Mm. Yeah, I know. It was just a little bit too hard, but we're going to get one before the season is over. Oh, you know it. Because let me tell you why you have to. You ready? You've seen those TV commercials where they talk about the Mountain West, and uh-huh. you've got that big – one-handed slam a jamma where you're coming through the lane, dude. You gotta put up another highlight before this thing's over. Oh yeah, I'm gonna definitely get another highlight before the season is done, dude. I hope they find you like on a breakaway and you like 360 and take the house down. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do something unexpected. Yeah, I like to hear it. So, Dwayne, how much do you think now you are going to play? Uh, it's not really telling. You know, that's a coach's decision. So. You know, but whatever, whenever I do get in for however long, I'm going to make the most of my minutes. Well, you, are you going to Coach Fisher and going, I want my starting job back? Uh, no, I'm not going to Coach Fisher saying that. You know, again, that's a coach's decision. So if he feels like I'm ready enough to get back in the starting lineup, then I'll trust Coach Fisher to do so. But other than that, you know, I'm just playing the game and doing what I have to do while I'm in there. What about team chemistry? I mean, this team, as you know, over the last two to three weeks has really taken some big steps. And it's because they're getting contributions from guys that at the early part of the season, when you were a starter before your injury, um, guys have made some big, you know, some big plays. Uh, Malik Pope has been a big contributor. Angelo Chol has, has made a big contribution. Uh, Trey Kell, especially lately. So what about you and inserting yourself, chemically speaking, into this lineup? Uh, I don't think we'll miss a beat. You know, I still, me and all the guys are still close. I've still been practicing with them. So, you know, I still got a little a little bit of catching up to do, but I don't think we'll miss a beat, though. Dwayne Poe on Scott and BR on the Mighty 1090. Dwayne, the night, of, uh, the night you went down, I remember your mother on the floor screaming, you know, call an ambulance, call 911. I just, I could hear a mother's, you know, pain. What was it like after the game for your mom and dad? Uh, it was pretty emotional, you know, to see their, their son go down like that. But they held it together. They stayed strong for me. So, you know, it was a uh, – I can imagine it being really tough on them, but they, they held their composure. No, but I mean after this game Saturday night. I should have oh, said oh, that. Oh, yeah, oh, I should have oh, said that. Oh, uh, they were really excited for me. You know, my mom sent me a text, and uh, my dad, he called me. So they were very excited. Mm, yeah. It's an amazing story, Dwayne. Mm-hmm. I, I got to tell you, man, I, I – I didn't think you would play again. Not because I didn't think you could come back and play, but because I didn't think the school the liability. Right, would have the courage, Absolutely. frankly, to, to put you back on the floor. I got to give this, I got to Jim Sterk mm-hmm. and uh, President Hirschman and uh, Coach Fisher, obviously, and you've already mentioned the trainer uh, and the medical staff. I mean, I got to give these guys all the credit in the world Absolutely. because, you know, it, it takes a lot of courage to put a kid like you, given the circumstances, back out on the floor. Yeah, you know, I've I've seen an enormous amount of doctors, you know, so I feel like they trust uh, the doctors and they trust me to know my body. So uh, I think uh, we've put this in very good hands, and they know. Uh, I think they feel confident in me that uh, that I'm in better shape now. 
Is it full steam ahead with your basketball career? You got to finish this senior season out, and hopefully this Aztec team is going to be primed and ready to make a postseason run. But after that, the athleticism that you've displayed, the long range shooting, the ability to come off the bench, et cetera, had NBA written all over it, or certainly a professional basketball career. Is it full steam ahead with basketball when this is over at San Diego State? Absolutely. You know, basketball is something I love to do, and I plan to play for a very long time. So, you know, I feel very confident right now. My heart is feeling fine. My body is feeling fine. Conditioning is feeling fine. So, you know, it's full steam ahead from here on out. Dwayne Poli, returning to the floor, returning to Scott and BR, and what an emotional and inspirational story. Dwayne, congratulations, man. I got to tell you, no pun intended, but this story is all heart. And um, we look forward to seeing you finish this season strong and go into the NCAA tournament. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank you for the extended conversation. Wow. What a story, right? No, please.